To power on the machine, press the power button. It'll take a moment for the machine to boot up. To start an exam and enter patient information, press the patient button. Using the trackball, move your cursor over to, to the ID section and set will put your cursor at that location. Enter an X for patient ID and test for patient name. Then to select the study description or preset, we're going to select renal using this drop down menu. Use the trackball and the set button to select renal. Then we're going to select emergency for purposes of PACS entering. And then to begin the examination, we're going to press confirm or start using the set button as well. In general, linear transducers are better for scanning superficial structures. They have better um, resolution of superficial things. When you scan your wrist to search for your radial artery, you will use this linear transducer. Curved transducers are typically better for uh, deep structures. They have better deep penetration resolution. When you scan the abdominal phantom, for this demonstration, use this transducer. Below the machine, you will find the transducer ports. The top three slots actually plug into the machine. The bottom three slots only are for holding the transducer ports. To change and lock in a transducer's port, flip this knob horizontally and it becomes unlocked. To replace the one you wish to use, insert and turn the knob vertically. Before changing a transducer in the port, you'll want to press the freeze button. Next, to select the transducer that's in the top, one of the top three slots, press probe menu on the touch panel. For the abdominal phantom, press the curved 382BT probe. The curved small probe is now active. Now we're going to scan the phantom. Use gel just as though this were a normal patient. So how to adjust the image once you've started scanning? So first of all, choose your appropriate depth and zoom using the depth zoom button. Pushing down will change the zoom. Or Pressing down on this button will activate the zoom function. And then turning the knob will make the image deeper. We'll zoom in and zoom out. To change the depth, press this button again so that it's on the depth function and then turn the knob. Okay. Now we'll zoom in just a little bit. Okay. Pressing Q scan will autofocus the image. Press that. Next, we're going to adjust the TGC or time gain compensation. That's these dials right here that slide over. Sliding the top dials adjust the superficial part of the image, and the bottom dials adjust the deeper part of the image. To adjust the, the gain of the entire image, press the 2D knob um, and then turn in the direction of either lighter or darker. This is the equivalent of sliding all of these knobs over to the right or to the left. So push down and then turn this knob to lighten or darken your image. So to freeze your image, once you have the image that you want scanned to stay on the screen, press this freeze button. To, once you have an image that you like and you want to upload it to PAX, press this store button. It automatically uploads the image to PAX. Once you have your screen frozen with your desired image, you can label it by pressing this ABC button. Move the trackball to the desired location on the screen and this is where, you'll labor, where your label will show up. Use the touch screen to label the image with the preset options. 
So we're going to label the right kidney by touching the renal tab at the top and then right kidney. To manually enter a label, again, press the ABC button and then you can use the keyboard underneath the control panel to type in your desired label. To label the anatomic location of where you're scanning, press this body marker button. It will be illuminated when it is active. Then use the touch panel to indicate the location where you're scanning. We will use this one. After you have labeled the appropriate location of your scan, press the body marker button again to make sure that you have exited this function. To measure a part of your image, press the caliper button. Then use your trackball to move the cursor to one edge of the ob object you wish to measure. Press the set button. Then, move the tr using the trackball, move the cursor to the other edge of the object and press set again. The length shows up at the bottom of the screen. If you want to measure another part of that object, you can press next and then measure another part the same way. Use the trackball to move the cursor, press set, move the cursor again, and press set again. Scan through the phantom and the, uh, and the transverse axis until you have your kidney in good vision. Then press freeze. Next, press the calc button over here. On the touch screen, press the appropriate label for what you're going to be measuring. So first we'll do the AP diameter. Use the trackball just like we did when we measured things using caliper. So move the object, move the cursor to one edge of the object and press set to mark that edge. Use the trackball to move the cursor to the other edge of the object and press set again. Then we'll measure the uh, AP length of the kidney. So choose that label on the touch screen. And use the trackball to move the cursor to the appropriate edge of the object and use set to mark it. Move the trackball to the other edge of the object and press set again. If you want to save this image, press store, but if you just want to get the volume and not save this image, you can press freeze to release the image on the screen. So scan the phantom in the longitudinal axis until you have a good view of the kidney. then freeze the image by pressing FRZ. So now we're going to be measuring the longitudinal axis of the right kidney, so press that button on the touch screen. So using the trackball again, move to one edge of the kidney and use set to mark it, and then go to the other edge of the kidney using the trackball and press set again to mark it. We have now captured all three measurements of the kidney and so we're going to calculate the volume of the kidney by pressing report. Um, again, you can upload this image to PAX by pressing store. To capture a CNA image, scan for three seconds and then press the clips button. Your previous three seconds of scanning are now a movie image. So now we're finished scanning the phantom, we're going to scan our own radial arteries. So before we do that, we need to end this exam. Press this patient button to come back to the initial screen. We're going to enter a new exam now, so do this the same way we did before. For patient ID, enter X and for patient's name, enter test. Then we're going to select our study preset by using this drop-down menu to select Doppler upper, upper Extremity and use set to select it. 
Again, select emergency, and then to begin the examination, use set to select confirm or start. So to scan your radial artery, we're going to use this transducer. It's a linear transducer. To change to use this transducer, press probe menu on the touch screen, and then select this transducer by touching it on the touch screen. The power button is good for perfusion. It's good for scanning things like hepatic vessels and bile ducts. It does not differentiate flow direction. CDI stands for color Doppler imaging. It's good for large vessels. Scans with possible motion are in, are instances when you would use this button. So for instance, scanning near the aorta where there will be a lot of movement, you would want to use the CDI. ADF stands for Advanced Dynamic Flow. It's good for smaller vessels. It has a high resolution with a high frame sensitivity or rate. There's a lot less blooming than with CDI. This one, however, is very sensitive to movement artifact, so you would not want to use it in your pulsatile vessels. To use color Doppler, press Power, CDI, or ADF. For this demonstration, we're going to be scanning our radial artery, so we will use ADF. Press this button. So scan your wrist and the AP axis without pressing too hard or you will compress the radial artery. Now we're going to want to optimize the image. Use the 2D focus to put the focal zone in the area of interest. That's the small triangle on the left hand side of the screen. Next, press Quick Scan or Q Scan to autofocus the image. Then adjust the depth of your picture by turning the depth zoom knob. Activate your Doppler by pressing Advanced Dynamic Flow or ADF. Then adjust the Doppler by turning the CDI knob and the scale knob. So now adjust your color Doppler box, which is the green box on the screen, by turning the CDI steer button. A advanced Dynamic Flow works best when not at 90 degrees, so the box should be at about 60 degrees. Now that you've optimized your image, we're going to scan in the longitudinal plane to obtain the pulse wave. So select your gate by pressing the gate button, and then use the trackball to move the location of your gate over the artery. Press pulse wave to activate the Doppler display. Quick scan will autofocus and or clean up your baseline image. And then press freeze to capture the image. To end the study, press the patience button. To review images that you have scanned and stored, press the exam review button. It will illuminate. And then to, ex to exit the exam review function, select quit at the bottom of the screen. To power off the machine, press the power button. Then select shutdown using the trackball and set.